first of all, I want to divide you into three groups. If you're a woman, madam, you are here. You got money from your pocket. It is paying you. You paid to enter here. May God bless you, madam. May you buy land. May you get four boyfriends. Some of you already have. You make it six. <laughs> Group number two. You are a lady. You are here, madam. And there's a gentleman. A very nice gentleman. Who took money from his pocket. He said, baby, you're very beautiful. Let me take you out. So that the world can see how beautiful you are. A gentleman paid for you to attend this show. Madam, clap for that man. May God bless him. May he get four women. <laughs> Men, are we okay? The third group is very useless. You are here, you are a man. You are seated as if your brain works. You look like you are responsible. You are seated right now. The chair is hot. <laughs> because a woman got money from her pocket and paid for you. Get out, go home. Go and wash the blanket. <laughs> Could you make some noise? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me tell you, for me, when I come here, I speak the truth. The difference I've come to learn, the difference between men and women, is when a man is promised, when a man is promised sex, no matter what happens throughout the day, his mind never changes. I'm talking from experience. Men, are we together? Ladies, have you ever promised a man sex? Early morning, 7 a.m., you send him a WhatsApp message. You send him a message, you're like, okay, hello. <laughs> Today I feel like we should do something. And you send the message. Okay, Lord, sees it. Men, when it is such, men respond quickly. You ask him for money, he'll respond after five hours. I, I will see what I will do. I will. If a man tells you I will see what I will do, he will not see. <laughs> He's blind. But you send a man a message, baby, I feel like I should see you tonight. Ten sec two seconds later. What time? What time? Are you free right now? <laughs> you see, this is the thing about women. When a woman has an appointment with a man, a woman's cameraman, they should decrease your mind. When a woman has an appointment, things can happen during the day and her mind changes. The mood of a woman changes in a time. You can agree at 7 a.m. with Angela. You're like, Angela, let us, today I want to see at 7 p.m. in the evening, come to my place. At lunchtime, Angela is crossing the road for Bote Avenue. A car almost knocks her. A thief grabs her bag. She calls you. Hi, John. You know what? I don't think today is a good day. I think I'm not in the mood. Uh, uh, no, keep the mood. Okay. You're like, no, baby, I don't think I'm in the mood. Let's 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 do next Wednesday. No, but today, no, let's do next Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday is fine. Dan, a woman's mood changes instantly. A man no matter what happens during the day. The appointment is happening. I have a friend who got an accident. <laughs> a car knocked him. He had been chasing this woman for three months, taking her out and investing. Man, investing. This man was knocked. Both legs were broken. They took him to Mulago Hospital. They asked him, who do we call? He said, you call her. Call her, call her, call her. They called her, Pio. Pio came to the hospital. In her mind, she thought the appointment is off. His legs are broken. He said, hey, baby, you're really having a bad time. Yeah, it is that, it is that. He said, oh, my God. So what have the doctors said? And they said that the muscle of the leg here is torn. Even the muscle down here is torn. My back is also, I think, broken. He said, oh, my God. So tonight we are not, huh? Eh? Tonight we are not, No. 
this muscle is okay. We are <laughs> men are we together? Those are the men. Have you ever gone to a hospital and you see a person who is real sick, but is getting out of the gate like, like this? <laughs> you ask him, where are you going? I have an appointment. <laughs> The doctor will see me tomorrow. <laughs> if I die, I die. <laughs> ah, ah, men. Men, we have suffered. Men, we have suffered. Let me tell you, women, you don't go through this. Let me tell you what men go through. Men, have you noticed buying a condom is very hard? Have you ever gone to buy a condom? You, you are acting. My brother, you know what I'm talking about. You are acting as if you are. Eh? We are together. Buying a condom, me, let me tell you, let me give you advice. I buy condoms from a pharmacy. Ask me why. Ask me why. When you go to buy condoms in a pharmacy, you can take five seconds and you are done, you are out of the pharmacy. Never go to a supermarket. A pharmacy, first of all, these are medical personnel. They know why you're buying a condom. In fact, they are happy because they know you're protecting yourself. You enter the pharmacy, they welcome you with a smile. Excuse me, sir, how can we help you? You also smile. Yeah, yeah. So, you have. <laughs> I don't know why. Any drug in a pharmacy, you buy when you're very loud. A condom, your voice goes down. Why? I don't know. People are very loud. Someone goes with stomach ache. Hey, you have metronidazon. Give me five. Give me five. Panadol, where? Pan extra. My, give me. I had a kid. Give me four strips. Four strips. Hey, you have which one? Omeprazole. Give me two. Give me two. Do you also have the... the uh, excuse me. The other one. Of, they're like, sir, please. The one of, of condom. Yeah. Reduce your volume. You give me three seconds. <laughs> the volume goes down. <laughs> but pharmacists, they get the three seconds they put in that paper. They look at you. Then they write for your prescription, like my brother here, four times one. Ah, God bless you, my brother. Thank you so much. For you, it is six times five. <laughs> if you go and they write one times one, woo! You finish, you go away, they even thank you, they say, Stop, stop, thank you so much. You keep doing what you're doing. And you go away when you're happy. A pharmacy. A supermarket. My brother. Supermarket, first of all, you are the one who looks for the condom. You, the customer. You enter inside, you are lost. You are looking for condom in bread, you are in bread, sugar, toilet paper, scholastic material, books, pens. You are moving around the supermarket, you are lost. <laughs> and these people in the supermarket, they can tell that you are lost. They know, I don't know how they know. They see you from a distance, they are like, this man is lost. Then they come to help you. Have you realized when you're buying other things, you can accept help? Condoms, no one wants help. When you're lost in the supermarket, you're buying pampas, books, and they see you, they're like, excuse me, sir, what are you looking for? Books! You people are hiding the book. Where are the book? They're like, no, sir, just go to the corner, turn left. Thank you! Put it where we can see you. Women complain. You abuse them. You people are losing business. Huh? Put books here. <laughs> Condoms! You can get lost for two hours in the supermarket. Moving around in the country of Gabon. This is sugar, sugar. One of the women comes to you, excuse me, sir. Hey, what's the problem? Um, you appear to be lost. Eh? Lost? <laughs> it is around here. I will find it. It is normal. It's normal here. As if you're the one who designed the supermarket. It's normal in the corner here. I even want to complain. In which parliamentary meeting, which parliament session did we agree as a country that condoms should be at the entrance? Who passed that bill in parliament? Every supermarket condoms at the entrance. The entrance. That is where things of responsible people are. Newspapers, new vision, daily monitor, magazines, the independent. Well, people are responsible men, people who are serious with life are buying newspapers to see what is the government passing, what, is, what, are, what are the roads, how are the roads improving. People are buying newspapers to see how Ukraine and Russia is fair. You to come with your head. Next to the newspapers, they are condoms. How do you feel? 
people are picking this brother. Like, hey, Ukraine, Russia, three decisions. You give me to Ukraine. You also come with your hand. These days I've learned if you want to pick problems, you must have to confuse people. When people are picking newspapers, you ask them, is that Bobby White? When they turn, you pick for you. <laughs> the worst part is the time for pay. That you know that machine that makes noise. You know that machine? Where you go to the supermarket and they put sugar and it makes noise. Beep. You bring a book, it makes noise. Beep. It puts the money, 3,500. You bring sugar. Beep. You bring a pen. Beep. 500 shillings. Condoms don't make noise. They can put it four times. They put your sugar. Beep. They put books. Beep. They pick your condom. Then she looks at you. Sir. You're like, madam, focus, focus. She puts it back. Sir, there's a problem. Madam, focus. That is when they make noise. I don't know why. The issue is between me and you. But they make noise for the whole supermarket to know that you're buying condoms. Appeal. This one's condoms are not entering. Why? Why are you making noise? Why are you making noise? Uh, uh, I've seen a lot of kids here. N A P L E P L E. Where are you? P L E. Where are you? U S C E. Aha. Exams. My sister finished doing exams, and she told me exams were hard. And my brother, you know what I'm talking about? Exams are very hard. But I learned during exams, during exams you would know who was prepared and who was not prepared. We had a student, he was an Indian, his name was Divesh. Very intelligent guy. We were going for chemistry, two minutes to the exam, we are outside the exam hall, two minutes. Divesh is outside, what is he reading? He's reading a novel, literature. I came to him, I asked him, I said, Divesh, have you finished reading the periodic table? I said, no, no, I'm not reading the table, I'm reading for literature. Hey, hey. Yeah, I'm reading for literature next week. Next week, we are going two minutes, we are going for chemistry. I asked him, what of chemistry? He said, no, I finished reading chemistry last month. He finished reading chemistry last month. He is prepared. Me and you, my brother, we know ourselves. We the stupid ones. I'm talking to you, you are looking behind. You know yourself, eh? Stupid people, two minutes to the exam. There's always a table of stupid people. You know that table? It has like four textbooks. Organic chemistry, chemistry detailed, chemistry summarized, 400 pages, chemistry summarized. <laughs> You're going for an exam in two, two minutes. Somebody is outside there revising. Manganese had fat. If I add soda hydroxide, it causes a blue present. Who has sodium? Sodium. Sodium had fat. If I add water, a pungent smell. Silver nitrate, silver nitrate, silver. As you're struggling, there's an idiot who passes behind all of you and says a topic you don't even remember. When you're busy struggling, silver nitrate, sodium potassium, if I add sodium, it causes water, blood, 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 a red pungent. What of sodium? Somebody passes behind. Mall concept. Mall concept. Who has mall concept? <laughs> who has mall concept? <laughs> Who has more? <laughs> Even history. History exams. You are there revising outside the examination. Mao Mao rebellion. What happened? Why did they leave? Did they were lack of water, fertile soils. Uh -huh. Who has it? Which one? British Columbia. British Columbia. It causes the what? Okay. What of Bantu migration? But <laughs> somebody passes behind all of you. No migration. No migration. You find a Munyangole reading low migration, bring, you're not even a Luo, you're disturbing us. My name is Dr. Hillary. Happy New Year, Gulu. God bless you. Thank you for supporting MC Cash.